about you and me. You get a motor car. <laughs> I love that one. I push a little button and I get everything. Except happiness. Welcome back! We're oh, yes. back. It's only a week, less than a week to go until E3, which is a big time of the year for us. It's a gaming-focused podcast for the most part. Welcome back. I'm Don. And I'm Justin. And we make up Don and Justin, and we like to, as the song just hinted, push buttons. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, this week we're going to be talking about, uh, gosh, Justin's played a lot of new games. On Rush. Yeah. Vampire, 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 um, and Shaq Fu, Shaq wow. Fu, interesting. Uh, and I uh, saw Upgrade, so I'll be talking about Upgrade. Oh shit, that's Upgrade. That's oh. all I could think the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's Upgrade. Anybody knows that that's from? It's from Idiocracy. Is, uh, yep, what I'm talking about. So, upgrade. <laughs> I love Idiocracy. Anyway, um, so a lot to get to. Uh, but first, I want to start off with this. This is kind of an interesting little side thing. Um, so for a long time, apparently, this uh, this this kid, I think he's like 14, uh, was he started a Twitter account called uh, Weezer Africa. And, <laughs> and uh, his whole goal with the account, he, he was tweeting for months uh, to the band Weezer, and he wanted them to cover... Toto's Africa, the song Africa by the band Toto, the 80s band. And uh, just for no other reason than to just have something to do, I guess. Absolutely. So it was just like a running gag for months and months and months. And uh, he just kept on tweeting at them, hey, let's, let's you know, cover, cover the song, damn it. And uh, so about a week ago, they released, they being Weezer, actually released this song... Which is Rosanna. You'll recognize it if you've heard any any pop music from the 80s at all. You'll probably recognize this song. But anyway, this is another song by Toto. This is another hit by them. But it's not Africa. It's not the song that this person, this kid wanted. Yeah. So they did this to troll the kid. It's not a bad cover, but... So anyway, that, that kind of blew up on my... And uh, the kid still wasn't satisfied. And uh, the pestering continued until a couple days later, finally. And this is the song that the kid want, wanted covered, by the way. I think, I think people recognize this, right? This is pretty... Of course. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's a pretty iconic song. But uh, anyway, so that's, that's the verse. That's the song that... This kid wanted to cover it, and finally, a couple of days after that, other version, other song, starts off similarly. <gasps> oh my god! They actually released it, so there you go. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, and it's actually a pretty good version of it. I hear the drums are going tonight, but she hears only whispers of some quiet conversation. And that's yeah. not that's not how Weezer typically sounds, so it's no. uh, it's kind of cool. I'll skip to the, the chorus. So this person like heaven now. Yeah, so they're they're uh, they're satisfied, I think. But it was pretty funny because it was like since 2017, this person's been tweeting at Weezer, "Hey, please cover Toto's Africa just for no other reason than just to have fun with them." And then finally, they ended up doing it. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. That's um, the power of the internet. Sometimes I know it's interesting, isn't it? But um, I was reading an article about this anyway. Apparently. Uh, they they also had another run in with a guy in 2010 online who was uh, he he was asking if uh, he raised enough money if they would break up. And <laughs> no, <laughs> apparently it didn't work. But anyway, <laughs> that was a funny funny campaign. But anyway, uh, so that happened this week. That was kind of fun. Um, what do you think 
I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Good? Good. Okay. Good. Um, now, whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. Oh, um, holy crap. This naked man all oiled up. So, let's move on to Onrush. <laughs> yeah. What about it's, uh, it's an online uh, game, right? Or is no. it? It is and it isn't. It's a multiplayer yeah. game, but you can play it offline. Okay, so let's let's get that out of the way first, because for whatever reason, I saw that I, like permeating on forums today. Some for some reason in that review thread, it got misconstrued that this is you can't save your game unless you're online, which makes it essentially an online only game. And I'm talking single player, so. Yeah. I don't know why that got spread around, but Justin's played it. I asked him because that actually sat my interest in. I was like, nope, <laughs> nope, I'm yeah, not playing no. it if you can't so, save offline. I don't like so, uh, Gran Turismo Sport because of that. It's kind of like, it's. It, I mean, it, it is kind of an online thing, but it's not. So what I mean by that is, so when you play the single player <clears throat> and you're on your online, offline, whatever, you're, you have a file that's created that keeps track of your your races that you do in the six different um, like brackets or circuits. Right. And you, you know, as you go through them, there's challenges for each of those, of course, winning the game and a couple other little things. And that's all fine and dandy. And as you go through each one, you unlock the next track and get enough points and you unlock the next one. But what you don't unlock when there's no online functionality is you don't unlock the points or the loot boxes, which are basically just for skins for your car or moves for your, your tricks that, that your motorcyclist can do but it's all just it's it, there's nothing like any kind of like uh upgrading your car or anything as far as, ter- as performance there none of that stuff is in the game so it's really all cosmetic type of stuff so other than that no you can completely play the game offline okay. as a matter of fact when when i first started playing it um my console was online but the, the like the servers were not because i wasn't getting any of the loot or any of the the points the currency when i did my mm. races so then when I started playing it a couple days later, uh, you know, just I started getting this stuff. and I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, it must be because their their servers are up. So. Yeah, okay. you can play it single player. Yeah, thankfully. I mean, and, you know, I just don't want it. I didn't want that to be like uh, kind of a rumor that just gets out of control. And absolutely, you know, because that's that's something that can just fly back in a developer's face. Oh, that um, stuff happens all and, the time. You see something that right, you know, and comes unfortunately, out and you like, know, oh, no. this is a. I think this is a really crucial release for. What do they call themselves now? I don't even. They used to be Evolution uh, Games or whatever. Right, right? I think just, well, I think it's just isn't it just Code Evo Masters games or something? Is it Code Masters? I don't know. It's just a division of Code Masters or something. But it's basically Evo games that that made MotorStorm and Drive Club. Uh, I believe it's. Sands some people because I think it's a smaller developer than they were when they were with Sony, but uh, it's essentially the same folks making kind of a callback to to MotorStorm in a way, right? It's it's different. I know it's not really a racing game, which is weird. yeah, yeah. It's definitely it's off road. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely different. Um, I mean, so. The thing is, is when I when I heard about this game at first, I was like, "Yes, I'm really excited for it." Then, then the news in- information came out, like, "Oh, it's team based. You don't actually like try to race to get first, and you got to do like specific challenges in in the race." And I was my interest immediately was like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, oh." So, anyway, lo and behold, an email came into my inbox. It was like, "Hey, would you be interested in covering this?" So, I, you know, I figured, well, why not? You know, let's 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 not judge a book by its cover. Let's actually play it. You know, hey, let's do something that people should do: actually play a game, and actually try it for themselves. <laughs> what, what I decided to do, idea. and it's, it's something that it's something that even any of you listening out there can do for any game that you have interest in. You don't have to actually read reviews or even read and go by the Bible of online commentaries. You can just actually literally go out and try a game, whether it's through GameFly, your friends, your friends' friends, your cousins, whatever. However, you can do it, and actually try a game for yourself. And form an opinion but anyway um <laughs> uh so you know i started playing it and i like i immediately was like wow this game is fun like this game is awesome like the sense of speed is great 
the amount of particles and the graphics and the way things are flying on the screen, the frame rate, super smooth, uh, lots of stuff going on screen. Um, and the, the idea of me having to play a racing game that's about finishing like literally first sort of just melted away. It really did. It became mm -hmm. like this adrenaline rush game because no matter what mode you're in, you're, you're kind of trying to survive, uh, and, and, and destroy other people that are against you on the op opposing team. Oh. And yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And, and, the, and the takedowns when you, when you kill certain people, it's kind of like burnout, you know, the camera can yeah. slow down and show you this cool, like crash. Um, and it's just, it's just a really interesting dynamic. And the game itself isn't like, it's not like it's complicated. There's, there's like a button for accelerating. There's a button to handbrake. Uh, there's a button to do your rush mode, which is after you get this meter high up enough, you basically can do like the super uber powered charge, you know, and this, the, the, the music goes all crazy and you hear this guy scream, ah, and you know, you go <laughs> flying forward and you can just take out anything. Wow. It, it reminds me of kind of like an SSX where you would build up your meter and yeah. three SSX yeah, yeah. three. Yeah. And then the music kicks off and, you know, and then it finally reverts back to what it was. Um, so it just becomes this big game of you trying to knock people out of the, of the arena or, you know, kill them to get more points or if you're if like for example there's four different race modes there's one that's basically where you're you're trying to take down people do jumps and drive crazy and the more that your team and you do that the more your your power or i'm sorry the more your um po points bar goes up and whichever team gets to the top of that meter you get a point and the first team to three points wins the wins the game so there's that mode uh there's another one that's kind of like capture the flag so you have to get into a specific area that's highlighted, but it's moving. It's like moving like along the track and you have to like get as many of your people in that track in that bubble and, and kind of claim it till the, the round ends. And then it'll kind of do a reset and it goes on again. Uh, there's another mode where it's called switch out basically or switch. And basically in that one uh, you play as a motorcycle and then you have like three lives. So if you get hit, you get hit, you get knocked out and you switch to another vehicle. And then when you get hit, killed on that one, it switches to another. And after I think it's three times, you still get to play so that you can help your team. It doesn't mm -hmm. like knock you out. So you can't play and you're just sitting watching the rest of the round, but that you only get like the three hits, I think it is. And then it, it drops the, hmm. uh, it drops the bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, everybody shares a bunch of lives or has a bunch of lives. And once all the team members exhaust them, that team gets the, the score. So um, okay. there's that one, and then the what was the last? I'm trying to think. There's one more. There's one more mode. What was it? Uh, oh, the gates. It's kind of like uh, check gates, where you're like going through gates, but the gates open and shut, right. and you have a time meter for your team. So say it's like it's like 40 seconds or something like that. Every time your teammate or you run through the gates, uh, the team the timer goes up, so you earn more point or okay. timer score. Gotcha. And so basically, these gates open and close. They kind well, they don't close completely, but they get really thin and then they get really big. So it's just, it's just, it's just this really like, uh, and really like kind of like a tug of war system in these different modes when you're playing. Um, and like one of my biggest concerns playing at single player was like, is my team going to fuck me over because it's AI, you know? So yeah. you're like, eh, how's that going to work? I don't obviously know how they they've constructed it, but to me, it feels like if you're doing pretty good on, on your own, your team kind of is doing good. And and if you're kind of sucking, then your team kind of sucks. So um, I don't know how they've done the AI. I don't know if it's kind of dynamic and and how it plays. Uh, but it never really seemed. It never was like I lost, and I was like, you know, that sucks. I was doing a perfect game, and you guys blew it for me. You know, yep. Which is a good thing. Um, but so this this whole this whole mode transfers like directly into the online. Except in online, you're playing with everybody who's you know a team member. And it can require a little bit more teamwork because you're now you have no AI. You're relying on your teammates, um, and all the vehicles in the game too have different abilities. So there's nothing like Mario Kart in this where you're like shooting missiles and stuff out at people. Mm -hmm. It's more like uh, you might have one car that when they're boosting, they're gonna send out energy to the cars of, on their team that are around them to give their boost meter higher. Or you might have a car that when you do a rush mode, it drops like walls behind them, like digital walls that the enemies can crash into, I think, or something like that. Huh. Um, or you might have, you know, there's like, a, it's like you have like a support car, you have like a car that one of them has an ability. So where when you go up 
uh, off pl uh, platforms or off of cliffs, which you do quite a bit in this game. You get a lot of airtime. Um, it like actually lets you push the button, and it's kind of like a magnetic honing in on. So if somebody uh, on the opposing team is below you, you'll hone in on them and you'll fucking slam right down on them and just destroy them. Oh, so okay. again, all the all the cars are different, and every time you die, get you, you crash yourself, or somebody takes you out, you can switch to a different car. So the game and the single player kind of slowly opens up some of these, and then it lets you kind of experiment. Some races only let you use certain vehicles, but it, it's a really interesting dynamic. It's like Motor Motorstorm meets Overwatch meets like San Francisco Rush or something like that, or Excite Truck. It's weird. Yeah, it's it's weird, right? But yeah. It's really awesome. It's so different. Like, I've never played a racer that's quite like this, and I feel like it could maybe pave the way for future racers where you don't have to come in first by yourself. Just, I got first. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, it's a team effort. And the game is just adrenaline-filled, man. It's like you're just constantly flying through the air. People are smacking you. You're doing takedowns. There's, like, hardly any room to breathe. Like, it's like, holy crap. And it's got that, like, Okay, one more round, one more round. One of my my peeves, well, I wouldn't even say it's a pet peeve. I just one of the things I talked about on my review was that um, you know, it doesn't have a ton of tracks. It's got like 12 tracks. But I guess the beauty part of that though is that each track has dynamic lighting, uh, like day day and nighttime. So sometimes you can be driving in the afternoon, it goes to nighttime, and then you're you know you got your headlights. Um, and you know, the environments change accordingly. And then also everybody wants <laughs> and, then, and then you also have you also have rain and snow that comes into play in some of them so it's just it's really cool it's the onrush soundtrack yeah soundtrack's great too it has music which is crazy i never thought you know right who would have expected music in a racing game not it's not racing either I, that's one of the things people were struggling to come up with like a uh, Shut up. Uh, a genre like what do you what do you put what do you put it into? Like I, people say arcade racer because it's a driving action pack. Yeah, you're still racing. racing game. I but, mean, you are still racing, but it's not conventional racing. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it sounds interesting. I'll have to look it up when it hits PC. That's the main thing I'm waiting on now because it's coming later. Um, supposedly, until the until the console versions don't sell. And then Codemasters lays everyone off, and they don't have a chance to port it to PC. See, that's that's the problem. That's what's going to happen. I'm afraid. <laughs> All right, well, let, let's not. I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go proactive. Pro it's not happening. Is it out on PC right now? Or is no, it later. No, and and they so it's it's coming to PC later, and that makes me nervous because of what happened to them with after Drive Club. I'm ho I hope to God that doesn't happen. Don't get me wrong, but you know I'm just a pessimist. That's all. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it I just say it was I'm a big surprise kidding, for me. No, no, yeah, it sounds fun, and I'm I'm looking forward to it hitting PC. Um, I'm not sure, and the problem with PC, obviously, with multiplayer games, is cheating. A lot of cheaters everywhere because yeah. it's super easy to do. Um, and consoles, since it's a multiplayer focused game, maybe it'd be better on console. I don't know, but. I personally, I just feel like sixty bucks is a real steep ask for this game. I don't know. Well, so I mean, it is and it isn't. I think if you really like racing games and arcade racers, and that's like a genre that, like, just generally, yeah, you have a good time with, it, it would be good to support it. But if if racers are kind of like a secondary thing, or you know, you just you can buy one racer and that can keep you going for a whole year, it might not be something you want to pick up. Yeah, like, that's the thing know, is right for me. Uh, I mean, arcade racers are, they're kind of timeless, so I can play, I, I can play, uh, Burnout or whatever, uh, and, and still just have just as much fun as, as a new game, and I'm, I don't know, like, I, I, I understand what you're saying with support it, like, that's one thing, but I'm kind of over that phase, I, I did that a lot during the Wii, <laughs> you know, I was just, like, buying games, hoping that developers well, no, would I stick mean, around and that kind of thing, I didn't, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I get that. I'm just saying if, if like, to me, I don't think we've had a lot of good arcade racers this gen. Like, I really don't. No, like, I mean, we haven't. We've had, we've the, had best, the best arcade racer, probably this generation, the best thing arcade racing-wise that happened was uh, bringing Burnout Revenge to the Xbox One. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's yeah. probably the, 
the the best thing that I can think of that I've gotten so, the mean, most playtime out of anyway. Yeah, I mean, so that being said, I do think this is this is this is a pretty awesome game that that I, again I should be I, played I by no biggest, one. Let's just put it well. Out there. I think the problem is everybody is kind of going into it like what I did, like you know, yeah. People, eh, yeah. They don't. They don't know. It's different. It's change. It's not something. Yeah, it's used. almost like uh, Bethesda did the marketing for this game. It's almost. It's almost <laughs> like. Uh, <laughs> shut up. It's yeah. almost like uh, like they didn't have any uh, any help there. But yeah. here's so with the uh, is the mode really called Switch? Because if so. That's the, the countdown to a, a lawsuit from Nintendo. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, that one mode, I think that Woo! one race is called Switch, Switch Racing. If I'm wow. What do they have? Vuvuzelas? What the hell is that? Oh, it's the little party thing. I was like, wait a minute. It sounds like a soccer match. Anyway. So I'll, I'll look up on Rush, and I think I think everyone should definitely at least rent it if you if you can find it. Oh yeah, uh, it's it seems like that perfect kind of kind of weekend rental to me. I don't know, and and I also think like you know especially when Black Friday comes up and the holidays, it, I bet you it'll be like at least forty bucks if not thirty. Yeah, and it'll I think be like that would 10. be a perfect price. It'll be on clearance. I'm just kidding. God, I'm just messing with you guys. If you if the developers are listening, I'm just screwing around here. You're going to be fine. Don't worry. You'll have employment come Christmas time, okay? This isn't Sony. You know? Sony the Sony doesn't care about anyone. They don't care about anyone but themselves. That's me, a hero for the for the little people. So anyway, um moving on. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely Moving think uh, Onrush looks cool, but like I said, you know, I'm just uh, taking a wait and see approach here because I I want the uh, PC version to come out, and uh, yeah. So moving on, I saw uh, Upgrade, which is a movie that is in limited release now. I think um, it, I, it's it was only in like 1,300 theaters this past weekend or something. So gotcha. if you weren't you know in one of the select cities that it's in, then you didn't get a chance to see it yet. Hopefully, it'll go into a wide release uh, because it's actually really good. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, I didn't know a lot about the story before I, I saw, I remember seeing a trailer months ago or something, but I had forgotten about it um, cause it seemed kind of generic or whatever. But um, so it tells a story of uh, a guy. Have, has anyone seen death wish? Did you see death wish? Uh, no. I so anyway, uh, Death Wish, uh, it's an old movie, um, and it was remade just now, uh, yeah, last Bruce few Will. months ago, by Eli Roth. Uh, it sucked. I hated it. But, uh, I just, I don't like Eli Roth's movies, but, um, <laughs> he, uh, it starred Bruce Willis, and, uh, it got all kinds of backlash, because the, the whole premise of the movie is, uh, Bruce Willis's wife and daughter, uh, victims of a uh, home invasion and uh, his wife gets killed and his daughter's hospitalized and he just, he gets his hands on a gun and takes it upon himself to hunt down and take out all of his uh, wife and daughter's attackers. That's the whole premise mm-hmm. of the movie, just yeah. to take revenge. This is basically the same thing. It's kind of, it's very John Wick. It's just uh, this guy is like riding in a car. It's set in the future, so there's like self-driving cars, like uh, picture like Demolition Man, okay? Uh, and they are, you know, driving home from whatever, and uh, all of a sudden their car goes crazy, and and it ends up on its roof, and uh, suddenly this gang of of ne'er do wells, let's call them that, because who uses the term? Ne'er do well, isn't that refreshing? Yeah. So, um, these this group of ne'er do wells uh, drag drag the husband out and drag the wife out and uh, end up shooting the wife to death in front of the husband and uh, husband survives. And are we talking? Are we talking? Uh, we're talking upgrade. Upgrade. We're okay, not upgrade. talking death wish anymore. Oh. So. Upgrade, uh, husband's in the hospital recovering. His wife was murdered right in front of him. And he uh, wants revenge. Right? He actually just wants to die. Actually, <laughs> He tries to kill himself, and he can't. So um, 
this like millionaire Facebook, it's like a Mark Zuckerberg stand in basically. So an important thing that I forgot is this guy uh, who was in the car crash. Uh, he's an auto mechanic in the in the future, and he ended up repairing a car for this Mark Zuckerberg like guy. Okay, and this Mark Zuckerberg like guy is in charge of this uh, technology corporation who invented this chip called STEM, and it uh, he he basically goes to the hospital where this guy is a quadriplegic now; he's completely paralyzed. And uh, he goes into his hospital room and, and tells him about STEM and says, hey, so that chip that I told you about the other day, I could actually uh, implant it in you uh, in secret. No one can know. And uh, you can walk again. You'll have your life, you know, your, your life back to a degree since you have to keep it a secret. No one can know that you can walk again, but uh, you'll be able to walk again. So anyway, he goes and gets the, uh, the, the STEM implanted into his spine. You know, it's like at the stem of his brain or whatever. So, uh, basically, that's the whole premise. From there on, he starts hunting down all of his wife's killers, like one by one. And and mm. but he's he's like superhuman now because of this thing uh, is able to take control of him, uh, take control of his limbs, and uh, it talks to him, kind of like Night Rider or something. Um, but anyway, it has great fight scenes, like really, really great action fight scenes. Uh, it's really like a low-budget action flick, but it was really, really well done. Um, the story, like I just told you, is really nothing more than that. It's really just kind of enough to set up the whole revenge plot. But the way that the revenge plot plays out is just super entertaining. And, and it's really gory. So <laughs> it's just really over-the-top, uh, just really great world-building uh, you know, good enough acting, uh, just, you know, it's really, it's really trim. There's really not there. I can't think of any scenes that were in there that I didn't think should have been, you know, that kind of thing. It was just really yeah. kind of lean, slim, just kind to the point, And, yeah, you know, you yeah, it was just, it was just a, a good time. Um, Are you sure this wasn't a, an adaptation of the surge? I'm not <laughs> sure what that is, but, um, <laughs> I think that was the, uh, wait a minute, where's the, uh, you know what I need? I need a, uh, I need a Married with Children soundboard. That's what oh, I yes. need. Oh, man, I'm going to find that. Hang on a second. Right. You don't remember The Surge, though? The Surge. I don't was, remember The Surge. I remember Surge, by, the, uh, uh, the drink. The guys that, it, was, it was a game, <laughs> and it was uh, by the guys that I think Deck 13, and basically it was like a Dark Souls kind of game. And basically no. it was about a, a paraplegic kind of guy in a wheelchair. He gets this grafted machine on him and it like lets him do all the fighting. <laughs> well I don't think this yeah it's not the most original idea you know yeah. it's but it was uh it was just the execution more than anything it was just like I said the the, the story is very straightforward you know and and the acting is just good enough it's not like you know great but uh yeah it's just the action was really well choreographed really well it was pulled off great like the uh the shots that they got in the action scenes are awesome. And then, cool. um, and then just, you know, this, the whole interaction between him and, and STEM, uh, is really entertaining, but I don't know. I, I'm, I didn't like death wish. I like this and they both have pretty much the same plot, you know? So it's, okay. it's all in the execution basically. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, you know, check it out whenever it hits Netflix or whatever. Cause, I don't know how long it'll be in theaters, but I mean, it's got like uh, what Rotten Tomatoes like eighty five percent or something, so it's it's okay, really up there. A, sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, it's up there, and it's um you know it's 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 definitely a guy movie. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a good date flick. I don't know, maybe it is, but um you know it's it's definitely something you got to know uh, going in that that there's some really I wouldn't say gratuitous, but like over the top gore, like violence. And it's like the whole theater at one particular part just went, oh, and a girl <laughs> next to me went, holy cow, <laughs> like just busted out loud. Holy cow. But um, yeah, so if, you, if you're squeamish, there's a couple of scenes that might get you. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a good time. I would, I would definitely look it up if you like um, good movies. 
if That's you cool, are cause... not a fan of good movies, I'm sorry. Uh, but I have, I do have an option for you. Hi, doggy. That, that's very much up your. Oh, hi, Mark. That's what you <laughs> want. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um. So you played Vamp Wire. Vamp. 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 Vamp Bird on a Wire. Vamp Wire. I don't know how you pronounce it, but uh, it's from Don't Nod. Don't Nod. And their name's a palindrome. Palindrome. Anybody know what a palindrome is? Palindrome. It's, uh, it's the same forward and backward. That's a palindrome. It has nothing to do with Sarah Palin, by the way. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Maybe she is the same forward and backward. Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I barely got a laugh out of them assholes. Um, but yeah, what is this game about? What is it? What is it? Uh, is it about vampires? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much about vampires. And Do they go to a masquerade? Um, no. Oh, it's different. Yeah, well, maybe they do. I haven't played far enough. Oh, okay. Oh, God, I'm hearing ultimate feedback in my ear. <laughs> oh, well, don't do that. So, by the way, uh, Don't Nod made a game called Remember Me, which probably yes. uh, is ironic that uh, no one really does remember <laughs> The game. I, I, <laughs> I do. That. I thought I liked it. I thought it was fun. Are you out of your mind? No, it was a good game. Yeah, it was. But it was uh, it was different. It was very like rhythm based. It wasn't really like a uh, like a typical brawler. Wait, did we just agree on something? No, I don't think so. Look at stomach. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> this man is totally insane. But yeah, it's definitely a different experience. The art in that game was what stood out to me the most. The most important thing is money. But um, it definitely did not hit the right notes with everyone, right? No. So It didn't. Chill out, Dick, dick Wad. Okay, anyway, it, uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> it definitely... Uh, I, think, I think it gives people pause... To uh, to try this game after Remember Me because they don't really know what to expect. This is this our first game since November Me uh, since Remember Me November. No, me. they also <laughs> did uh, Life is Strange. That's right. Okay, which got really good reviews. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but uh, I only remember Remember Me. I don't. I didn't. I don't think I played Life is Strange. But that yeah, is so, uh, truth. That's a truthism. Life is strange. As long as you're being true, and it's true. Yeah, Vampire is, if you've seen some of the reviews, it's, it's actually like a real mixed bag. Uh, and to me, that's always kind of some Again. more interesting games because to me, it's almost feels like it's the most real because maybe you see a game that's critically pain, unless it's just really, really bad, or you see a game critically cray, you know, cr- uh, praised, I'm sorry. It, you know, you're kind of like, hmm, is it really that good? Uh, so these always feel kind of like a bit more realistic to me. But uh, basically, here in Vampire, or Vampire, however you pronounce it, you play as this guy who wakes up basically in a pit of bodies, and he's like, what's going on? And basically, he starts to get this feeling of like he needs to blood, get blood. And uh, it kind of starts with him running into some person. You can't really see them very well. And the, the feeding feeling takes over, and he bites them. And then as he's drinking the blood, he's kind of coming to because he's been weak obviously and he realizes he just killed his sister so it's like oh whoops yeah uh, that's then not some something hunters, that you typically want to have happen yeah so then some hunters i guess that are hunting him down start shooting at him and you got to run away and that kind of starts the game off but it's a it's an interesting mixture of uh, would I, I guess I'd kind of say it's kind of an interesting mixture of a narrative-driven game, like something like uh, Bioware or Telltale Games, where you have a lot of dialogue to choose from. And I mean, when I say that, there's a lot of people to talk to in this game um, to, to kind of craft your storyline. But then there's also the combat portion of it, which is like a third-person kind of hack-and-slash RPG action game. Any questions? Uh No. It's not something I'm ever gonna play, so I'm just uh, well, I'm just listening like and soaking it in. Of the games that come out. Do what? That's like ninety five percent of the games that come out. No, you I play play. pretty much everything. 
Oh, sure. um, that is single player oriented and offline and has uh, uh, full 4K support on uh, oh. Xbox One S. Okay, so then you are going to play the game. No, I, I said S, not X. So oh. that's that's literally nothing. I don't play anything oh. ever. Let's see what the music sounds like here. You gonna keep going or are you just gonna stop and I hear a bunch of cello or bass. It's interesting the concept art looks like Dishonored to me. Interesting. Or the cover art. It's the same time period, right? Well, Dishonored's kind is it, of is it a Victorian art. time period. But yeah, it's London eighteen something, eighteen. Yeah, okay. Oh, so it's like so, uh, it's like nightmare creatures. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what the atmosphere of this game reminds me. Of. Really? Or, yes. Huh. Absolutely. Well, the soundtrack's not bad. I wonder if uh, it keeps up. Let's see. Ten minutes in. Oh, they went full choir. Oh, right here then. <laughs> That's right, I forgot about those movies. Yeah, so the one, oh, it's really the one thing about this game is like the atmosphere is on point, absolutely. Like like you said, it, it reminds me of Nightmare Creatures at times with the thick fog and the lighting or the, and the order. setting. What's that? The Order, 1886. Yeah, but The Order never gave me that feeling for some reason, but this one does. Because it sucked. That game was awful. Well, that, that, <laughs> I mean, that, that game was, was a shooting terrible. game. Terrible. So, What's uh, funny is, to me you know, is... This is a melee-focused game when it comes to the action segments. Oh, it is? But, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all like melee-based. Uh, you know, so it's like, like Remember Me. Fine. It's like Remember Me meets, uh, meets Nightmare Creatures. I mean, kind or of, just but the combat's <laughs> not really rhythmic. It's more like oh. strategic, like you have to know when to dodge, when to attack, and, and you. there's RPG elements into it where you have to get your weapons, yeah. and you can upgrade them, and you can okay. unlock new skill moves. But So the most interesting thing about this game, though, is the NPCs that you run into. Now, there's four districts uh, in, the, in the game, and they all have, I think it's 16 NPCs that you can talk to, uh, speak with, unlock hints to learn more about them, and potentially side quests. But this is where the game kind of throws you through a loop because if you don't um, feed on these people, you won't be as strong as you could be. Now, it's that, that being said, you do get some minor experience from killing enemies, and when you suck the blood during the combat, because you can like stun enemies and suck their blood a little bit, but you, I mean, you get enough, and then you you go to bed, you go to sleep, and you can upgrade your character with your experience. But as you play the game and you kill certain people, you'll get more, like a lot. And so, for example, if you're talking to somebody and you've gone ahead and unlocked like three or four of their hints, it basically makes their bloodline richer. And then when that happens, uh, they, they give you the most experience you can if you were to eat them. So the thing is, though, when you eat people, it can affect quest lines. It can make it so that you cannot get a quest line because you killed that person. Or uh, it could, if you kill too many people in the specific areas, it get, the whole area can get abandoned because it can get like sickly. The whole area can get abandoned and then it's filled with like way more monsters and stuff and all the people have left. Weird. So, yeah. So there's like this big like pull and tug to like, do I want to kill these people? And do I not want to kill these people? And the decisions you make. It, if theoretically the game can be harder for you if you don't kill as many people, uh, but you know you'll be a better person. You'll be doing the better thing. You'll probably get the better ending. Uh, and I think I read there's four different variations on the ending depending on your choices. But somebody was telling me that if you actually get a place section to get abandoned, you can go in that area and explore still, and you can find like you might find a dead body or somebody who's changed into a vampire. It was one of these people, or you might find a note that says what they did when they left or other little things. So it's like, it's just really interesting thing because you can't, you can get some experience by playing the game regular, but you can't just get it all. And you, you obviously, 
you know, you, you don't want to kill everyone. So you kind of want to ask people questions, get to know them and learn them. And like I said, there's a lot of talking in this game. But uh, the good thing is that the majority of the voice acting is really good, too. It's very solid. I haven't heard any cringy people yet. Now, granted, I've only been in one district, really, and talked to, you know, the handful of people there. But uh, so far, I'm I'm just really impressed with this game. If I had to pick one thing to say isn't the best is the combat. And I don't think the combat's horrible. It's just it's nothing, like, amazing, and it's not, like you know, something like, oh my God, the combat's just so good and flashy. No, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty basic in a lot of ways. And you just have to know when to dodge and attack and use your skills and whatnot and heal and all that good stuff. So I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's a lot of people right now in a nutshell, but, um, you know, you might want to give it a try. I will tell you, this is going to be something special. <laughs> oh my gosh. So uh, 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 Hello, what? everyone. Uh, Hello, everyone. Look at Hello. this guy. I um, I'll try this one at some point. I'm sure. I, I think it'll hit uh, Steam sale or something, and that's well, probably doesn't? the point. Uh, a lot of things don't. Anything owned by Activision? Well, doesn't. that's Activision. Like, uh, uh, what is that stupid game? Starts with an S. It's still like thirty bucks. Starts with an S. Singularity. It's oh, like $30 yeah. on Steam. It never goes on sale. <laughs> I own oh. it. I think it went on sale once and I ended up buying it, but I was like, I lucked into it. So yeah, that's, 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 they're the Nintendo of third party publishers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess the, the last, the last thing it I'll is, say on this game though is that, Jesus. I mean, Again, it's it's a very divisive game. You've got if you look at Metacritic, it's got some sites are you know raving about it, and others are like, eh. And uh, if you just have an interest in it, just check it out at some point because I I'm I've played about six hours now, and I'm I just want to play more. Like I haven't gone back to it yet because I just haven't had time. But it is a game I am completely enthralled with. I want to know what all these people are doing. I want to know what the storyline is. I'm enjoying the combat. And I'm taking it really slow and methodical and, and uh, you know, I'm kind of, you know, if the game gives me a side quest and I head that way and there's a, a level like 15 dude and I'm level 10 or 9, I'm not going over there. Like, okay, I got to come back to that side quest later. I've heard some people that were complaining that the game is too hard um, or, you know, that they're just having issues within that regard. But I haven't run into anything like that yet. I'm just kind of playing it smart because... Some areas have way higher level enemies. And it's like, yeah, no, you don't want to go that way until you've leveled up. So, yeah. Cool. Well, I don't know what else to say about that one. I just, um, it's interesting that uh, Don't Nod's still around. That's all I'm I'll glad say about are. that. Yeah, me too. I'm just, you know, beating the odds. Talk about surprising. Um... All right, moving on, I guess. You done talking about that one? Yeah, the, the only thing I was going to say, too, is, you know, <clears throat> like somebody posted on Twitter, if you really, are, you know, you've got so many people these days going, I love single-player games, and there's too many multiplayer games. Uh, if you like single-player games, buy freaking single-player games, people. <laughs> you know. No, it's true. I, that, you're right. People get on to publishers for not making games they want, but then they don't buy the games when they are made. So it's really a double-edged sword, right? It's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, I guess, more than anything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because people just go, hey, why don't you make more single-player games? And you go, well, did you buy the last ones that came out? And they go, well, no, I didn't like them. Well, yeah. they don't know to make them. Hi, I'm looking for Ray Finkel <laughs> and a clean pair of shorts. That's such a bad audio clip. Oh, mio mio. Oh, mia. Such bad. You're right. It's awful. I don't know where they got that from. Probably a VHS rip. <sighs> okay. Well, I, if we're gonna to, if we're gonna do it, we might as well. Shaq Fu, we're gonna talk about it. Oh, oh god! Uh, this is oh, this gosh. is a good one. 
That's a yeah, good that's way to put it. That's actually very appropriate. Uh, that's a very appropriate sound clip for that. Good thinking. Good um, thinking. Did you see what I put on Twitter? No. <laughs> I I I put a small little video clip where I'm, oh, you know, man. the video clip comes on and I'm just it looks like I'm asleep on the couch, and I I suddenly pop up and like oh, oh gosh. I, I just had a really horrible dream that Shaq Fu got a sequel and then the camera kind of moves over to, and it's sitting right there next to me in my head. And I'm all, oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Do, so, uh, do, do. You know, but. you know me, Don. I have a morbid curiosity to put my hands <laughs> on as much shit as possible. Um, so obviously I had to pick up Shaq Fu. Um, and you know what? Oh, I- I'll man. say this. Uh as for a game of what they're trying to do, which yeah. is basically a side-scrolling arcade brawler, it's not bad. It really isn't. It's, <laughs> I have played, I have played so many worse games that were like trying to be side-scrolling brawlers see, that were just not okay. even fun. Well, I gotta see the uh, ice. It's it's funny because the I think the thing people will have a problem with is not so much like the the gameplay, but the writing is uh, it's a little crude. At times, from what I saw, yes, it, and, it's 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 very much like slapsticky and just not politically correct yes. at all. But the the game Which it really is, isn't trying to be serious whatsoever. I know, so it, but I, I already saw, and this is months ago, but I saw people taking issue with the the dialogue and the jokes and that, and I was like, God, really? It's Shaq Fu, guys. Well, it's Shaq Fu, but <laughs> I mean, does anybody do that with Marlon Brand or Marlon Wayne Brothers movies? I mean, from the nineties, well, so, you know. Nah, so many- nah, I don't know. Then they didn't. I mean, there's yeah. a whole people do that now. Yeah, like there are, yeah. you know, and that's a whole other can of worms. People look it at is. Uh, people look at uh, you know Ace Ventura of all things, uh, that kind of stuff, and they go. <laughs> and they just don't get it, and they think it's you know. Just- Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. They're like, what is this about? And. It's just not politically correct, and they start yeah. tossing around all kinds of. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get that deep into games. Like, I don't, I just, it, it's, <laughs> well, it's one thing if you're agony and, and like, you know, one of your cut scenes is freaking literal, like rape, hellish rape. That's one thing, but yeah, uh, why would you cut that? Yeah, but a game, but you know, a game like Shaq Fu that says like, "I was born in the land of General Shao Chicken" or something. I don't know, it's something like that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it's it's just silly, ridiculous humor that's trying to be silly. Why don't you call him Chinaman? Um, Jeez, uh, Shaquille. Um, there's a point actually too where you're talking to somebody and the guy, this other guy's like, "Your craps are probably bigger than these enemies," and I was, <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> uh, but um. I mean, it, the game's like a two-hour like arcade brawler. Like it literally is probably like two hours long. It's got six so, levels. Um, to me, combat's so fun levels. enough. There's you know, there's a couple different variations in attacks. Um, there's even a move where you hit enemies oh. and they go flying to the screen and crack yeah. the screen, kind of like uh, Turtles in Time, where the foot soldiers hit the screen. Oh yeah, I don't know uh, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, you know. So, I'm like, Shaq. <laughs> if you grew up playing the arcade games like x-men simpsons yeah. those kind of games that lasted like an hour i mean that's kind of what Shaq but they ate a is. whole bunch of your quarters that's what yeah, they did take, they ate take a whole your bunch quarters. of your quarters that's the Turn whole the page. point can you dig it that's the whole point they, they ate a whole bunch of your quarters oh my gosh I, what's the matter are, are you a quarter sh- i'm Shaq. are you your quarter or mine Shaq. i'll tell you right now you go play this game you're going to have the best time. Kazam! And you're going to have the best time. I mean, they even made a joke. He even makes a joke in there about how, like, now he's going to make a... They talk about the, the thing. Uh, what was it? The movie Steel? Yeah, I was in Steel. Man and of, they, I was and Man then, of Steel. And, and then they talk about, like, yeah, we're, that's going to be our next game. <laughs> Steel. Steel. Uh, Steel. Hey, we're Don, though. Oh, Don. Don Busy. You taking a... We're taking a shazam, she's at. <laughs> He's in the uh, the toilet. Oh, okay. all, uh, but anyway, Shaq, uh, thank you. Your game is pretty fun, uh, even if it's, I don't he, think it's he, worth the price. He's going to be done soon. He's taking yeah. a dump. Uh, but my crab's bigger than him. Yeah. Did you hear me, though? That was a great, uh, was a great, great joke. I wrote that line. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it's better than the original Shack Fu, that's for sure. But that's not. Well, that's good. Much. It's it's always one of those things to you want to improve on uh, a terrible game from the nineties. Yes, if you can. Um, it's kind of funny though. I saw someone on Twitter earlier say that <laughs> that the new the new Busby game was better than Shack Fu, and oh, I'm wow. sorry. I played the new Busby game, and I could not handle that game at all. Like I'm what? having some guiltless fun, arcade like fun with Shack Fu. <laughs> I didn't have, I didn't have any fun with Busby. Oh no! Oh man! What happens in a few days? What do you well, mean? Well, in a few days, I finish Shaq Fu and then I return to the store. <laughs> I'm just That's doing my job. I know you are. I work alone. I work alone. You do. I mean, that's why I have a switch, so I can take it with Verk? me. Work alone. Verk, where are you from? You said it yourself. I did. <sighs> I asked you where you're from. Impersonating an officer, resisting arrest, fraud, reckless driving, and lying to the sheriff. Impersonating oh, an officer, I'm the party pooper. resisting arrest, fraud, <laughs> you're repeating yourself. reckless driving, and lying to the sheriff. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't now. mean to lie to the sheriff. Do it now. Okay, okay. But anyway, I'll just tell you that Shaq Fu, I don't know, it's just mindless fun and it reminds me of an arcade game. And no, it is not yeah, true. Yeah, if I play it for like an hour... You know, if I play for like an hour, I'm going to be pretty bored. So I better put it down and then pick it back up later. But then you only have like another hour and you're done. So wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong. What? I can't even <laughs> stop being such a pussy. Okay. Anyway, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. Ten, two hundred, twenty. <laughs> <laughs> is that how much you'd pay? What would you rate this game? Make it a 10. No. That's way too high. No, 20. Nope. No, no, that nope, doesn't nope, even nope, exist nope. on the scale. Some man just tried to kill me. Well, that's not my problem. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think it's I think it's priced way too much, at least the physical version. I how guess the is digital version is 20, but even then, oh. I, think, I think this game should have been either 10 or like 14 bucks. It's... Again, it's just it's a short game. It's you know it's it's basic and it's just like an arcade brawler. There's not there's no depth. There's no RPG systems. No nothing. It's just it's a silly silly game of Shaq. And I'm glad to see Shaq still getting work. <laughs> he's he's on uh, the TNT uh, show with him with Charles Barkley every week. So it's that time. Don't worry. We're uh, we're done, folks. Don't worry. What did we learn this week, Justin? Anything? I learned that I want to see Upgrade really bad. It really sold it to me. Like, I want to it's see okay. it. It's okay. Uh, for a good movie, it's not bad. What, put, what does that mean? Put that together in your head. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. That's one of my mission parameters. <laughs> if you want to see it. What the fuck did I do wrong? All right. All right, all right. <laughs> are, you, are you ready for E3, though, next week? I am. I can't okay. wait. I can't wait. What? It'll be. <laughs> you can't wait to be disappointed. I'm done. I'm finished. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just looking forward to something different. You know, yeah. pay attention to something other than work and uh, sleep for a week. That'll be nice. All work. Just, I'm looking play. forward to Nintendo. I have no idea what the hell they're they're showing. That's why Same I'm looking here. forward to them. Everyone else, everything else leaked. We know what everything, everything else is. Whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. Oh. I'm done. Yeah, You're done? I think we're done. What'd you learn this week? Um, I don't know. I learned there's a lot of Arnold sounds out there. Did you, really you also learn that the uh, Ace Ventura one was horrible? <laughs> well, there were like <laughs> four different soundboards. Bullshit. <laughs> no, seriously. Bullshit. Nope, nope, nope. You psychopathic bitch. Fuck you. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you. Damn. You want to fuck with me? Fuck you, asshole. You, asshole. You, asshole. Yes, I would like to have the room, please. <laughs> I'm done. I said I'm done! Stop shouting! Okay. I'm not deaf! Thank you for joining us this week. You can find us yeah, anywhere online you. at DNJ Push Buttons on Twitter, soundcloud.com slash DNJ Push Buttons. I think it'd be fun to sit and reflect. 
if you had a chance to let the playlist keep going. Yes. Fuck. Um, so yeah, where, where can they find you, Justin? They can find me at slasher underscore JPC on Twitter. You can find me at it's Don Allen uh, on Twitter, but yeah, you don't want to follow me. I'm uh, I'm an asshole. And then uh, yeah, that's it. Subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel so you can get all the uh, latest uh, stuff. Go watch Justin's live streams. Go subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's doing these these cool uh, video reviews. Puts a lot of work into them. Go check them out for sure. Um, I'm done. Finished. Go see yeah. Upgrade. Go play on Rush and Vampire and. Even Shaq Fu, why the heck not? And E3 is next week. This yeah. time, next week, we will know what is coming throughout the rest of 2018, and we will be here with a full recap of everything that we saw and our thoughts on it all. You're excited. Feel these nipples. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, until next week, everybody, uh, take care of yourselves, and that. uh Extra little special someone known as each other. Yes! Each other! Yeah.